Welcome to ZombieChickenTaco.com. My name is X8. This is a Lesson 1, Video 10, the final of our little first lesson, so we can get out of the tools section. As you can notice, I've got myself a little bit more of a graveyard here, using all of the same type tools before, creating multiple different prefabs throughout the level. We've got a grave prefab, two of them. We have about six different gravestone prefabs throughout the map. Uh, we also also got a big piece of texture, um, our, our terrain patch, textured with a grass texture. And we'll go from there. So the first thing I wanted to cover when we go into um, some of these prefabs I wanted to mention were the system engine tools. We hit alt page down, we can go into our prefab. By the way, all of these prefabs can be found on zombiechickentaco.com and they can be found under the prefab section. And within this actual prefab, we've got multiple pieces. I've included what's known as a, uh, a clip brush, and it's a player clip. And it's the same thing as before, it's just a brush that we replace down. I think I have two of them here, yep, I sure do. It's a brush that we have, and we just give it a different texture. That texture is under texture, usage tools what this does is gives you all of the filters out all of the tools that we're going to use like the cock has been speaking of earlier but we're going to select the player clip you have different functions in here like the uh, regular clip this is clips everything bullets monsters um, players the next one over is just your AI clip it's called clip underscore AI or mon for monster that one clips your your monster keeps him from going through uh, you've got clip full, which is everything. I believe it's light and shadow. It's almost like it's an invisible brush that does everything that a normal brush would do. Um, we have a whole bunch of miscellaneous others that do various things within uh, the engine. But the ones we're going to be using are, let's try that again. We're going to be using clip AI, clip, and player, or player clip. Those are the ones we usually want to focus on. You'll also want to do a no sight clip. Um, there's a few of them in here. No, uh, no sight dirt, no sight metal, no sight. I'm not quite sure all of those do. Right now we're going to focus on no sight, no clip. What that does is it allows zombies to walk through um, that area, but it doesn't allow the player to see any of the scripted items behind that or when it calculates any of the scripting, say it wants to spawn a zombie, and you'll get an error sometimes if a zombie spawner is sitting right out front of a, a player, and you'll get an error that says, uh, could not spawn, a uh, player can see the spawn point. Uh, what that does is the AI blocks that calculation of seeing that, that zombie spawner, or the AI spawner, and it keeps your, you can still see the stuff on the other side of it, it doesn't block your viz, doesn't block any of the 3D rendering, it's just the calculation of the scripts. Uh, so that no sight means that the player doesn't can't see any of the scripting happening behind there. Uh, I've seen FX play just fine behind it. Um, vehicles, any kind of script pathing, everything plays fine behind it. It's just how it calculates. Uh, but you'll do that in front of zombies to get them to walk, to actually spawn where they're supposed to spawn, if you're going to have them look like they're going to spawn out of midair. You can add an effect to their spawning, which will cause them to come out of the ground. You can, uh, with an animation piece, you can have the dirt rumbling up. You could have like a lightning bolt zap them down and they spawn in. Those are some of the, the, the things you could do, but you'd actually need this clip in front of it. But right now, we're just going to go with player clip. We're going to hide this. Um, now we're going to go back out with an alt page up. Don't Make sure you save it. Uh, back to your main map where you've stamped everything. In here, I'm going to show you something that we call as the Entity Viewer. Uh, you're hitting N, and what that does is it brings up the Entity Viewer. It's, it has the same tabs as your filters and layers, but the quick shortcut key is N, as in Nancy. Go to the Entity View, and in here has all the details about that, their origin, how far you want to move them. It also has the angles, like if I were to rotate this just slightly, and escape and reselect it it now adds an angles list to it and gives you an actual numerical value for that on your XYZ axis um, also with the origin same thing XYZ and your model you can actually change the model say if I ever wanted to change that you can double click it and it opens your op open tools or you can have it selected and then click model and that'll bring up your models tools and finally last but not least when you select it you have your key values down at the bottom now 
if you ever have any question of what can go into these is outside of the scripting but what's already in the engine you can find that all that information up at the top here it's going to be your uh, pretty much everything has it the light has it your prefabs have it your world spawn has it left click it gives you a list of definitions radius fall off so on and so forth of all the different things you can do with that light and there's lots and lots of tutorials and wikis on, on how to operate those depending on what you're using but right now we're going to select this gravestone say we didn't want that gravestone we're going to select that five and we're going to change that to four and dun, 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 we have a new gravestone there placing gravestones fairly simple um, I wanted to get into texturing texturing you use the S key which is your surface inspector what that does is that it gives you your horizontal shifts, stretches, rotates, uh, can cap it, can change the size of it, setting it to a natural text, fitting it to whatever you want. There's some wiggle, which allows you to adjust some of the shifting of it. Um, then you have your texture size coordinates, plus you have old terrain stretching. All of this, all of these are uh, there to m use to decal and texture one of your prefabrications let's say my my crypt here what I had to do is I had to shift select all the faces of any of the faces on these on the, the brushes that we're going to use and once those are selected we use the surface inspector and over off on the right on horizontal shift and vertical shift there's an incremental value you need to set those to either one two three four the point two five is very very minute detail but for just adjusting it put it about two three four and then you can shift your texture any way you want to align um, to align your texture for a better detailing of, of your model or your prefab I should say and that's pretty much it there's gonna be more about it a little bit later in the next few tutorials uh, we have something also known as the light mapping that we're gonna get into light mapping is if you have a curve and you hit shift L and I'll take you into the light map. If you notice that we have some blocks here, everything turns into this blocky mode, all of your, your geometry, and that tells you essentially the, the how how that light's going to be projected onto. If you notice my curve here on this building, the curve is it has has a much much tinier checker pattern than than the rest of it. So what you would need to do in that situation is select it, open up the surface at expector and you want to cap that or natural it and then that'll give you a little bit a little bit larger light scale and you can do that with all of your surfaces selected all at once and we'll give it a universal uh, a light map to that hit S surface inspector and I can see the L map fit natural each one does something different and you just want to get the one that gives you the best square look that you can possibly find now I do have my texture set high. Um, I'll put that back to one. There we go. I'll map. See the smaller textures fit. I not want to do that one. Typically in your light map, that's usually natural, and that will give you the the, the basic light map that'll fit all of your regular geometry as is. And that's pretty much on light mapping. I will go more into it as we go into some more detailed and advanced tutorials later on in lesson two and three. Thank you very much for your time and zombiechickentaco.com to go post on the forums. Thanks. Bye.